So good morning, everyone. I am Stacy Humans. I am with Nimer. And today we are going to talk about some more functions of the Learn platform. Now, as you may remember, the Learn platform is our new and improved uh, university. Um, we moved to NeoGov in May. Um, and we this is the second. Uh, webinar I have done for administrators and we're going to go a little deeper this time into a couple different um, functions uh, that you may be interested in trying out. So I'm going to share my screen. Now if you have any questions please feel free to put them in the chat box um, and we will Karen Buckley is also here with me and she's going to help answer questions. Um, and jump in when I forget something, which I happen to do here and there, as we all do. So let me share the screen. Okay. So we are going to start off with um, Making someone your direct report. Now, the reason you would make someone your direct report is to assign them courses through the course catalog. So the way that you would do that is by going to learners. Selecting the person that you would like to be your direct report by clicking on their name. Hmm. Nope, that's not what you do. <laughs> you would click on the pencil. I'm sorry about that. You would see the person that you want to change and you would click on the pencil. Then it brings you to their profile. In their profile, you can give them a direct manager. Now, all of the folks in your, in your tree and your roster will pop up but you could just start typing your name in there and you would give you would be the direct manager for them. So the reason I showed you that is because I wanna show you quickly how to assign the multiple ways of how to assign a course. So the first way to assign a course is through the course catalog. And again, as I said, this would only be for your direct reports that you have put your name in as their main manager. So I'm going to, um, search for a cyber course because October is cyber, cyber Awareness Month. So I'm going to look at cybersecurity best practices and I want to assign that through the course catalog. Here it is, I clicked on the name and I'm going to click on enroll others. Now, as you can see, I only have a few people that are my direct reports. I could click on the person that I want to enroll. And then as simple as that, just enroll the employee. You will then get a pop-up that says just exactly this, this bulk action may take some time and it will finish up and it'll let you know. The second way you can uh, assign a course is through the course management tool and the admin catalog. Now, the reason you would do this is to assign to everyone in your, in your um, municipality, not just your direct reports. So again, I wanna look for a cyber course and say I want to uh, give them this one, cybersecurity data privacy pops up here, I clicked on the name of it, gives me the little information about it. It also, you know, sometimes Karen and I and Jen, uh, who you may have talked to, will mention the course code. Uh, the course code is a very important thing, especially for those annual requirements. Course code is for annual requirements for discrimination and harassment is NY26. And course code for workplace violence is NY27. And here is where you will find that course code. You'll also see you know, the required score and all kinds of things. And here 
is again, the roster. And here is where you can enroll employees. And you'll notice I get a lot more options here because they're not my direct reports, they're everyone. The third way to enroll employees, just move myself out of the way here, is through the learners tab. So you would go to learners right up here. You would um, click on, say I wanna enroll everyone. Now I checked that top box, but I, if some of you have been on the phone with me or Karen, you may know that by checking that top box only selects the first page. So if you have more pages of people, you have to make sure you select all of the records by clicking on this box right here, select all records. And then you could go to bulk actions. Now in this bulk action, it will give you a couple different options. So you can enroll people in a course straight from here and it'll hop right over to the course catalog and you can choose from there. But say, I want to pull a transcript, uh, not a transcript, a listing of all the people in my group. I've had a lot of questions about, I don't know who's in here. I don't know any, you know, I, I, I need to find who's in here. So I click that top button again. I chose all the records and I pull bulk actions. Now, because I've chosen every one, I can export this to an Excel spreadsheet or PDF or whatever works for you. I like Excel spreadsheets because I can manipulate it more there. Um, I'm going to open up what it just pulled for me. I might pull in a different window. No, here it comes. And here it is. So it'll show me um, all types of information here, whether they're activated or deactivated or haven't activated yet. When they haven't activated yet, it says, you'll notice here, it says send activation email. So this is how you can see all the statuses of all your folks and their email addresses, lots of information here. You can also, before you uh, select the um, the bulk action, you can switch the selections of your spreadsheet by, let me just show you again, by clicking this four vertical lines. You can select different things like maybe you want their employee number or maybe you don't need their department that they're in. You can select and deselect all these things and manipulate your spreadsheet to your own um, needs. So that's pulling transcripts. I mean, that's pulling your roster of folks. The next thing I wanna show you how to do is pull transcripts. So the reason you would pull transcripts is to see who completed what, right? Did I assigned all these courses? Did they complete them? Did they start them? All that kind of stuff. So to pull a transcript, you're going to go to the training activity tab. In the training activity tab, you have a couple options. You can pull it by course, individual course, or by the learning plan. Now learning plans are groups of courses that we're gonna go over hopefully if we have time a little later um, this, in this um, webinar. Learning plans are groups of courses that you can assign at once. And some of you, I may have already showed this to and showed how much easier it is when you have a group of courses. So in any event, we're just gonna choose the one, the course option. Now, down here is all the folks in my, in my group. Over here is some filters that I can choose. So say I only want to choose the buildings and grounds department. I can choose that, but say I do want to, I want them all or just a specific course. So say I want to choose some cyber courses. Again, this month is cyber awareness month. <laughs> so I'm going to choose some cyber courses. Now I can choose one cyber course or I can choose 
a multitude of courses. So say you wanna check on those annual requirements, workplace violence, discrimination, and harassment, you can throw them in there and see how they've done. So now I have my courses checked that I wanna look for. Oh, Karen, she's a really good student. She's done a lot. So then I want to print this out. Say I wanna show my uh, supervisor all of the training that has went on. I check that top box. Now, if there's more than one page, again, that button that says select all is going to pop up. And then I choose bulk actions. I can export it to a PDF or an Excel and manipulate it just like I showed you before. Now that will show you, um, and you can pick and choose, say you only want a few people, say I only want Sophie, I would, I would just choose her. And that is how you can see who has completed what, a transcript in other words. So now we have, uh, I wanna go over external learning events. And I'm gonna go over external, external learning events and classroom courses. They're kind of different, but kind of the same. So I'll give you an example. So an external learning event is something that of course you do externally out of the training uh, website. So say you have a CPR class or say you have a um, some kind of ex class that's going on outside the training platform where you would find where you have to add this external learning event before you transcribe it on folks um, profiles to be able to see their on their transcript. So in order to do that, you would go to libraries and external learnings. Now this is just for a singular external learning. If you have, you know, here you can see we, we have a lot of external learnings going on with NIMR. We have seminars, we have offsite trainings, we have webinars and conferences. We, we've had lots of things go on here and we've added them all as external learnings. It's so easy to add them. So again, I went to learning plans, I chose external learning and I go ahead and add. So the learning type, you would choose what type you want. You would um, name it, of course. Now you only have to fill out the, the required uh, fields which have the asterisk. So you would name it a name that you know is appropriate. You would give it a location name. So say it's in the conference room or say it's at the firehouse, something like that. You would put, put that in there and you would fill this out as much as you want, um, but you definitely only have to fill out the asterisk fields. And then you would go ahead and save it. And it would show up just like this here. So this is your library of external learning. So they're sitting there waiting for you to pluck them off and put them in your people's um, profiles. So in order to select one of those and add it to one of your uh, employees' profiles, you would go to the learners tab. In the learners tab, you would select your individual so say I wanna add it to Sophie Canty's um, profile. Now see, this is her profile. This is what she has done. This is the courses she is enrolled in. And I went through this, I got to hear from the learners tab. And down here at the end, you see, here's external learning, so easy. I want to add that external learning that I just made and it'll pop right up here. So say I want to add um, that she did this administrative webinar. Now the webinar was on 825, it was completed, um, but I can't choose that yet. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, say there was a certificate given at the, at the administrator webinar, you could scan it in and upload it to, to the um, system. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So you see, she is got the administrator webinar, administrative webinar here on her external learning, and she completed it on 
August 25th. Now there's another way and another um, option you can use, and that is called the classroom course. So classroom courses you would use in place of external learnings say if you were doing a bunch of trainings at one location. And one thing that I can, uh, that Karen and I thought of recently was to now is going um, right, currently the DPW um, departments are having workshops go on a seminar and they might be attending many different classes at that seminar. That, that is something that you could use as a classroom course. So the way that you would make a classroom course and you would do these same kind of steps to add a policy or anything that you want to make as a new course, I'll, I'll show you more what I'm talking about in a minute. So you go to course management to make this classroom course and then admin catalog. Now only administrators can do this. Regular employees cannot, only administrators. So course management, admin catalog. Here, I want to add a course. Now there's many other options here and we can talk about those um, if we have time or on another um, webinar, but this I want to show you is the classroom course, an in-person training in a classroom. And I wanna add the course. So again, I have to fill out all of the um, asterisk fields. I have to give it a course code. Say you don't have course codes. You just wanna give it something that makes sense. Say I wanna select the category and I'm going to give it, um, I'm gonna make a new one actually. I'm gonna make public works. So now it's in the course category of public works. I can give it a description if I would like, like, you know, where, where they went, what they did. Um, I can give it a course image if I want to. I can upload an image from my computer. Say you want to give it a big truck or something, you can do that. The duration you can add, but of course you don't have to because it doesn't have an asterisk. Is it a required course or no? You can choose that yourself. Is pass required, passing score required? It's up to you if you wanna make there be a passing score required. At this point, I don't, I just wanna see them complete it. Um, I do I want them to self-enroll? Do I want them to have a mobile check-in? So I could, I could give them a mobile check-in. This, this looks like a new function to me. So I wanna research that a little bit more before I give you more information about that. If I want to have a enrollment approval required, I would toggle that on and I could choose who is going to um, approve that for them. And I could, if there were any course attachments, I could upload those and you know you would just make this fit whatever classroom course you have. So I'm gonna add this classroom course. Now, here's the workshop. I made the shell of the, of the class. So now that there's, I made the shell of the workshop. Now here's a spot to add different courses. So say I want to add, um, today is the 20th and the time that this course happened was at, is going to be at 1030 AM to 11. You can choose an instructor and you can choose a classroom location or make a new one. So I'm going to, this was at, done at the senior center. Now, Session one, October 1st. No, I don't want it to be October 1st. I want it to be October 20th. You see how I did that? It had October 1st there. I chose October 20th. You see session one, Karen Buckley is the instructor. 
and the class name, I don't want it to say DPW workshop. I want it to say um, signage training. And I want to add this class. So now you see in the sessions, I have um, signage training here at the senior center. Now say I want to add another one. I could choose another, another session here. Say there's one at two. I'm gonna change the time to 2.30. No, not 2 a.m. And it just populates to 2.30. And David Bloodgood was the instructor here. Uh, class size, I don't need to do weight on or off. Now you see in my, in my um, calendar here, I have both of my, uh, I don't have both of my courses. It looks like it just took signage training here. Hmm. Sorry about that. I didn't save the first one. Signage training. And my second one that I want is I'm sorry about this. It's getting a little murky here. So in any event, I have made my session. I'm gonna add another session. For some reason, it's not letting me add. I'm gonna get back to you all on that in follow-up court, in a follow-up email on how to um, add another course. So I've done my sessions and now I want to add people to the class. I could go back to the workshop. Here's signage training with David, but I have to publish it in order. I have to publish the class. I'm sorry if this is confusing. They both need to be published. So here's the shell, the DPW workshop, and here's the signage training. This has to be on, published on, as well as this in order to add it to your folks transcript. I would then go again to learners and say, I wanted to make sure that Michelle was enrolled in this class. I could enroll her in this course. Uh, it wouldn't be through external learnings. It would be through the admin catalog. Again, remember in the beginning, I showed you how to add people to the admin catalog, add courses through the admin catalog. So I'd go here, I go to admin catalog and I could search for the course that I made, DPW workshop. And here it is right here. Now say I want to assign um, people to this class. Now this is going to show something that you might not see. This, for some reason, this is showing for all of the, the group, not just your specific area. So I don't wanna confuse you anymore with this. I need to uh, research why that's doing that right now. I apologize about that. Um, and I want to, uh, I'll follow up with showing you how to assign that to uh, people in your, in your group. So um, I'm gonna go back to making a learning plan now. So a learning plan, as I talked about in the beginning, is a group of courses that you may want to assign all at once. This could be done for annual requirements. This could be done for onboarding. 
I'm going to show you how to make a learning plan for onboarding. So I would go to learning plans and I would go ahead and I would add a learning plan if I might want to make a new one. These are the learning plans we have already made here, but I want to add a new one. I'm going to give it a name. Say I want to make an onboarding learning plan. I got to spell it right first. I have to spell it right. Onboarding learning plan. I, again, I'm going to give it a code that makes sense. So that for me makes sense. I'm going to give it a description. New hire training classes to um, required. So if I need to make them do it every year, I would do that, but I don't really need them to do this every year. This is just a once and done kind of thing. Um, we don't need to do it every year, but for those annual requirements, this might be something you wanna do every year. Is this required? I'm gonna assign this to people as I go. So I'm not gonna check required. The relative due date, I'm gonna give it a due date of 30 days. Uh, once I assign it, I want it to be done in 30 days. My reminder settings. So the reminder settings are just that, they remind the person that you've assigned it to that they haven't done it yet. So I'm just going to give them um, a reminder of a week before. And then I'm going to, and, and then I'm gonna have them reminded again two days before. I also want them to be reminded if it's overdue every week. So then I'm going to go up and I'm going to save all of my work here. Oh, I need to, I need to give it a, an amount of days. but I think that it would only be um, assigned one time if this is something that's not required, so you would have to assign it. So here my learning plan has been created, but now there's no courses in my learning plan. I just made the, 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 um, the skeleton for the class. Now I want to add courses to the learning plan. Right here, add, edit courses. So my courses are gonna pop up here. Now, I, I want to make sure that they do those annual requirements right away so I don't have to chase them for it. So I'm gonna plug in, remember NY26, that is the discrimination and harassment class. I'm gonna check mark that off. I'm going to look for NY27, workplace violence. I'm gonna check that off. I'm gonna look for a cyber course because I think it's very important um, to make sure that they are getting some cyber, this is a really good one, cyber security, data privacy and safe computing, SY18, it's 30 minutes long. That is a good one to show everyone. So now I have chose three classes, you see three records are selected. I'm gonna add those courses here. So you see, I say I didn't wanna add one after, I could just click the trash can here. So I have all of my courses here that I am going to assign a new employee and now I'm gonna save it. But remember, not ready to assign until you publish it. There we go. We're going to publish it. Now it's published. Now I'm going to go in and assign it to my, my folks. Now I'm going to go to the admin catalog. I'm going to, oh, actually, I want to, I want to go to learning plans, I believe onboarding. 
Okay, so you see how I did that? I went to learning plans. Here are all my learning plans. I looked for the one that I just made, onboard learning, onboarding learning plan. I scrolled down and now I want to register my learners by employees. Now I can choose them all. I can choose just one or two or however many. And then I go ahead and register that employee. I registered David. Again, this bulk action may take some time. I'm going to come back to that. I want to see if David, if it shows up in David's um, profile. So the way I would do that is go to learners. I'd click on David. And I want to see all he is enrolled in. I'm gonna click on learning plans and here it is. He's enrolled in the onboarding learning plan. Thank goodness, I did it right. <laughs> there it is. Now, I just wanna show you one more quick thing. I promised to make these extras quick. So I'm gonna give myself just a few minutes to show you how to add a policy to your, your your um, environment here. So what I'm talking about is maybe you want to have everyone acknowledge the harassment and discrimination policy for the municipality through LEARN. This is how you could do that. You would do that by making a course. Now, remember how we made that classroom course before? We're gonna kind of do the same thing. We're gonna go to course management, admin catalog. We're going to add a course, but this time we're going to make a custom online course. Now, again, this isn't an actual course. This is your policy you're gonna upload, but this is how you would do it. So I'm gonna choose custom online. I'm going to add the course. I'm going to make the course name. I'm going to give it um, the course code and the category, discrimination and harassment. If I need to put, put in a course image, I can do that. Um, you may notice in some of our courses, we have different type banners at the top of them. And that's what you'll see on the top of um, those course cards. Some of them have yellow, blue, or, and red. You can give it a description if you want. But again, you only have to do the asterisk fields. Um, pass required. I am going to make this have pass required. And I'll tell you why. Because we're going to attach an acknowledgement statement to it that they've acknowledged the policy. So they need, they need to get 100% on this. Okay. And it is required. I'm not going to make it required. But you can make it required for everyone. Um, and then I'm going to go to advanced settings and I can give it some keywords like say policy or discrimination. You can choose all that, all that kind of stuff. You can upload the course attachment here if you want, um, but there's a better place and I'm gonna show you where that would be in a moment. Um, the visibility in your catalog, do you want it to be, you know, to just certain departments? Or do you want it to be to all? I want it to be to all departments. Um, is there a maximum time per slide? So we want them to read the policy. So I'm gonna make it a minute per slide, one minute. I don't want them to just flip right through it. You may want them to be there for three minutes. I'm not sure. You may not want to do that. It's up to you. Um, and I have, done everything I need to do here, and I'm going to add this course. So now again, 
you may notice a theme here. Oh, the course code already exists. I need to give it a different course code, I guess. I think it worked. So you may notice a theme here. We, we have to make a shell and then we have to give it the meat inside. So this is what we're doing here. We've made the shell of the policy and now I need to give it content, right? Here's the content. I'm going to add the policy. So the chapter title I'm going to give it is whatever you want it to be. I'm going to just make it test policy. Huh? I don't want to record audio. <laughs> test policy. I'm going to give it a course color of red, maybe. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to type something. Please read this policy and acknowledge after afterward. Okay. So now I've, I've added that. And here are some rich text um, options here. I can insert images. I can upload a file, which is what I want to do. I want to upload a file. I can do it here. I can add a link, but I'm actually going to add another chapter. And that chapter is going to be the actual policy itself. So here's chapter two. And actually, I want to change chapter one to test policy, test policy opening or beginning or whatever. This one, test chapter two, I want to be the actual policy. And I'm going to give it that red color again. I'm going to add content here and you can do it here or you can do it here. I'm going to add a PDF, um, which is the actual policy. And here I can upload from my computer. I'm just going to pick anything here on my desktop. It's not going to be a real um, a policy. And I've uploaded my policy here. So here you will see our, uh, our um, attachment in a few different pages here, okay? Your, your policy will show in a few different pages. And now I wanna add that acknowledgement statement, right? So I wanna add a question group next. So here's my question group. I wanna add a question. Now I could make a, a lot in my libraries, I could make questions that I always want to ask, or I could just add one right here. Have you read and understood the policy? I can add a video, I can add an image here if I want, um, and I can select the kind of answer I want to get. I just want a single select answer of yes or no. I think I do want to add this question to the library because I may want to add a few different policies here. So I'm gonna add that there. If I have more than one answer that I want to uh, uh, add, I would add them here. I mean, more than two. So say I wanted to add yes, no, not sure. I could add that here. Say I wanted to switch the um, order. I would grab hold of those dots right there. Now you see, I, I have this one selected. So that's the correct answer. And now I wanna save it. So here is my policy. I wanna preview this policy and see what it looks like. So here's the opening. See, it's making me stay on for 
for a whole minute. <laughs> Please read the policy and acknowledge afterwards. I'm gonna continue. Here's the sexual harassment policy itself. One page, two pages. And here is my answer blank. Have you read and understood the policy? So there you go. That's how to upload a policy. I'm not gonna make it published because I don't want you all to uh, <laughs> pretend to uh, acknowledge a fake policy here. <laughs> um, now, I have pretty much went over a lot of information. I've tried to squeeze it all into less than 40 minutes. I almost did it, 42. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can ask them now in the chat feature, or you can send me an email or Karen an email. My email address is shumans. I'm gonna type it here for you. My email is shumans at rightinsurance.com. And I know you can't read that because it's super small, but I'm going to make it super big. Shumans at rightinsurance.com. And Karen's question, uh, um, email is kbuckley at rightinsurance.com. Dot com as well. Karen, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. It says, how can we pull a bulk transcript showing all who have completed an external training? A bulk transcript for all. Unfortunately, for external trainings, they don't show up in a transcript you would need to use their actual profile. That is something that uh, NeoGov is working on and something that they do want to eventually add. Um, so yeah, we, we eventually want to have external learning such as our snow and ice um, classes that we put on and push them down to you. I mean, we do have some up there now as tests but they're not, they don't really show up in your external learning transcript. So that's why we haven't been able to do that yet. Um, but they are working on that. And one more good one, which is, can you review how to deactivate an employee? Good so one. So one, one question or one thing I think we should mention is, is you showed how to upload a policy. And can you explain how that would show up on their transcript, that acknowledgement state, or not, not statement, but the acknowledged policy would show up on their transcript as well. So they have a recorded acknowledgement. Yeah, it. it would. So let me go back to my um, test and policy here. Oh, you had to do it, how to deactivate an employee because that only takes a couple of seconds. Oh, okay. Let's show how to deactivate employees first. So I'm going to go to my administrative tab and my users tab. And say I want to deactivate, say J no longer. No, I don't want to do that one. Let's see, is there one that's, okay. SC no longer works here. And I want to deactivate them. See, they're activated here. I would go, I could edit the um, account. I could deactivate them here. Or I could be really quick and slick about it. And I could just deactivate that user right there at the end, that little power button. Yes, I want to deactivate. So now you can see that SC is no longer in my list. And I did not show you how to do this, but this may be something that I show you in a future uh, webinar. You see, I have Stacy's view here. That's my view that I have chosen that I don't wanna see deactivated people in my list. 
I'm going to switch it to show all users so you can see that I have deactivated SC. And that is something I'm going to show you in a, in a future webinar, how to make that um, view only show what you want it to show. You know so what, see, I think you should also show them because I have a feeling, as you and I both know, a lot of them, the employees came over, they haven't activated their account yet. And I think that's the, that's what they're going to, they are going to see more commonly than, you know, somebody who's already activated their account. I saw somebody's on there. Yeah. So here, so here's somebody, my test employee here who hasn't activated their account yet. So they no longer work here. This was migrated over from the other system. They no longer work here. They're never going to get that um, activation email. What do I do? So what you do is you set a temporary password for this person. I go in and I set a temporary password. Make sure though that you follow all the things the password contains must contain all of these things here. So I always use welcome one, two, three with an exclamation point. And why is it doing that to me? Uh-oh, <laughs> what happened? Oh, geez. technology. It's trying to pre-fill a password for me and I don't want it to. <laughs> so learners, let's go back. Nope, I need to be an administrative users. They're very tricky, those two. So where'd that person go? I don't want to see Stacy's view. I want to see all users. So here's my test employee again. I want to set them a temporary password. Welcome, one, two, three, exclamation point. Welcome, one, two, three, exclamation point. You see that fills all these boxes here. I'm gonna save it. Now you see that person is activated. My test employee, where'd the test employee go? No. Here they are. Now you can see that test employee is activated. Remember they weren't send activation email, now they're activated. But now I don't want them to be here anymore. I want them to be deactivated. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and deactivate them. So now that test employee has been activated and deactivated. Now, the second thing you wanted to see, what was that second question, Karen? Oh, um, I thought you went over that, but I do have another question. Um, okay. Wait, um, so now I feel bad because I don't want, let me go back to this question. <laughs> Pull transcript, okay, showing all who, it was external learning event and you answered that. Okay. Right, so um, somebody asked, so for a specific course, can you pull all who have completed that, that course? It yeah. can't, so, it, so the question did, was about a, an external learning event as well, which we said we couldn't do, but for instance, I think everybody wants to know who did the sexual harassment training so far. Yep, uh, so, so we go back to training activity, right? And now we are going, these are all my people here in my whole municipality that are logged in, that have an account here. I'm gonna put my course in here. So say I want um, workplace violence. That's one of the courses that we need, right? So now I'm just seeing workplace violence. 
and I'm just seeing who completed it, who's still in progress, who's enrolled. Now say I want to print this out. I select the green check mark. If there's more than one page, remember I have to click that select all. Now I'm going to do a bulk action and I can export it to Excel or PDF or whatever you want. So you just plug it in the course, the course name in that course field there. Now, if there's more things that you want to switch up, say you want somebody's department or somebody's um, the completion date or their supervisor's name. Did you see what I did there? I clicked those four horizontal lines and you'll notice that they're there in a lot of different places. So when you click those four horizontal lines, know that you're gonna get something that flies out from the side and you'll see a lot of options you can choose from. I hope that answered it. Any others? I don't see any. Um, so I think that um, if you wanna put up our email addresses again, Stacey, um, I sure. think thank you very much, great job. In a, in a short amount of time, that was a lot of information to digest. So thanks a lot, Stacey. And thank you everybody for attending. There is also a more basic administrator webinar, like adding a learner, deactivating a user, uh, selecting and creating departments that Stacy did that's recorded. We also have flyers for regular users on how to access the most popular class, which is the sexual harassment and discrimination training. So reach out to us if you want that flyer for your employees. And we do have hundreds of courses available on the LEARN platform for our NIMA members at no cost. So please reach out if you'd like a course catalog. We'd really like to see you take advantage of it to its full extent. And uh, anything else, Stacey? I don't think, I don't see any new questions, but we do do one-on-one -on -one Zoom webinars all the time for the platform to, to walk you through it. So don't hesitate to reach out. For That's right. That's right. Well, we do, I'm actually doing one uh, at 11 o'clock. <laughs> So yeah, anything that you need, let us know. I plan, we plan to do these um, as new functions come along, as people are getting more um, adept in the, in the platform, you'll want to learn more about different things to do, like switching that view. That's going to be one of the things that I talk about next. And please email me or Karen with things that you would like to see in the next one, like making us an actual course. You can make an actual course if you have one or if you have an idea and we can talk about that. So email us your ideas and um, if you have any questions, let us know. I think that's it, right? I think so, thank you. Thanks everyone and thank you very much, Stacey. Thank you all, have a great day. Bye. Bye.